And then it gets even worse. Martha Washington, Megyn Kelly, who was a member of the Reich, I'm no longer calling it the media, I'm calling it the Reich. Kelly is a member in good standing of the Reich. It's not actually a dirty word. If you look up the word Reich, in case you're an ignoramus, uh, you will see that your ignorance is uh, greater than your hatred. Reich is, is a, a German word that roughly translates as realm or territory, kingdom or empire. Megan Kelly is a member of the Reich, as you well know. So she now attacks a panelist on the Muslim question, as does Christie, a good member and stand, a member of good standing of the Reich. Listen to clip three now, not to here's here's a, a Bridgegate Christie on the Muslim. Does Mr. Trump need to apologize to the president and to Muslims? He's got to decide what he wants to do for himself. But I would just tell you that if somebody at one of my town hall meetings said something like that, I would correct them. I'd say, now the president's a Christian, and, and uh, he was born in this country. I mean, I think those, that, those two things are self-evident. Do you think it would be right for Mr. Trump to apologize to Muslims this morning? Well, listen, I think it's, Donald Trump's got to decide, as we've seen, and I've said this all along, he's got to decide how serious a candidate he wants to be and, and, and how he handles different problems like this are going to determine that in the eyes of the American people. I'm not going to lecture him about what to do. I'll just tell you what I would do. And I wouldn't have permitted that if, if someone brought that up at a town hall meeting of mine. I would have said, no, listen, before we answer, let's clear some things up for the rest of the audience. And I think you have an obligation as right, a leader you, you, you get to the do picture. that. The Jackie, the Jackie Gleason of the Republican team, Christie, is now finished. He's always been a uh, member of the Reich. And he's not going to save anything except his own skin. He's good for nothing. He's a classic Politburo member. I don't think he could do anything good for the country. I asked my housekeeper, who's from El Salvador, a legal resident, by the way, for many years. She speaks Spanish and some English. I said, do you think that Obama is a Muslim? She's a devout Christian, a churchgoer, believes in Jesus. She said to me without prompting, he is a serpent. She used the Spanish word for serpent. I was actually stunned. So maybe he isn't a Muslim. Maybe he's a serpent. Join the Savage Nation. Call now. 855-400-SAVAGE. 855-400-7282. Savage. 34 minutes after the hour. It's a jungle out there. And the most vicious animals in the world are attacking Donald Trump. And I hope he's more vicious than they are. I would assume he's no uh, spring, uh, no baby. He's no babe in the woods. He's perfectly capable of taking care of the Reich members. Megyn Kelly put out the fingernails for him, along with Chris Christie. But Christie, as you well know, in that, since that famous hug scene on the airport tarmac, Christie has been neutralized a long time because of his obvious ownership by the Reich. So we won't worry about that. And we could play another soundbite or two, including Hillary Clinton, which is the most laughing of all of them, the most laughable comment is by Clinton saying that she, Trump should stop behaving like a president. I mean, just leave that out there as a pregnant statement. So let's go to the callers for a minute. And I'll ask you this question because it's come up again. Why do you think so many people think he's a Muslim? And why is it an issue again? WABC Joe, you're first up today. Go ahead, please. Your opinion counts. Michael. Barack Hussein Obama. If you hear the name uh, Jack Kennedy, Jack Lynch, you think it's Catholic, Irish Catholic, Mario Cuomo, Italian Catholic. If you hear the name, it, it sounds like it's, uh, it's Muslim. So what's so bad about being a Muslim? Uh, why is that a, uh, an insult? Well, that is, that's, enough. No, that's a, the bigger question is not whether he is a Muslim, but which side of the Muslim equation is he on? As I've said before, the largest Muslim country on earth is Egypt. Egypt opposes ISIS. Obama does not support Egypt. So which side is he on? In, in, uh, in Islam, it's a patriotic uh, genealogy. Goes I know, I know you're repeating what I just said. It's patriarchal, right? I'm glad people are learning from the savage nation. Yes, in Islam, it's the patriarchal descent. <laughs> as it is amongst uh, the Jews. It's patriarchal. If the, uh, if the father is Jewish, the child is Jewish. Unless they're Reformed Jews, then if it's the mother is Jewish, then the child is Jewish. So it's different according to which sect of Judaism you belong in. But in, in Islam, I don't know of any sect of Islam which says that a child's religion is determined by the mother. It's by the father. But again, that's not the issue. The issue is which side is he on of the Muslim equation? 
That's the real issue. And I've told you that many people in the intelligence community say that he's helping the Muslim Brotherhood, that they're running the country. They're instructing the FBI. They're instructing the uh, CIA. That's I've read this. We could probably confirm it if it became a big enough issue. And uh, Trump is the only one who didn't say, oh, no, 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 no. Oh, get that guy out of here. No, no, no. Uh, we can't even touch that question. It shows you Trump's not afraid of any question. He's a free thinker. He's a free man. He's not a member of the Reich. And so those who belong to the kingdom, those who have created the new empire, uh, will immediately say that's an illegitimate question. But apparently Trump is not a member of the Reich. He said, well, we'll look into that. Plenty of other things out there to look into. And so I want to take some calls on that and we'll move on because I think this question should answer itself shortly. I want to get to the huge issue of, it's a big topic for me. Who was Mao Zedong who killed 45 million Chinese, who was the father of political correctness, who established the entire idea of a cultural revolution, which has been copied by leftists ever since he did so. Berkeley, California. I can name 20 American cities that are mini Mao's, where there are mini Mao's running the city. Political correctness reigns. The University of California on the Janet Napolitano. She may as well be wearing a blue suit with a red star. She tried to pass a, a hate speech code yesterday that was roundly put down by the few regents of the University of California who understand what freedom of speech is. Napolitano is a hateful Maoist, and she got caught. Her dirty skirt was showing. So the Maoists are everywhere. They're entrenched at every level of this government. I really want to get to that. Because Islamism and Maoism are very similar. They rule by terror. If you look at the most despotic Muslim nations, they rule by terror. They kill anyone who disagrees with the leadership. There is no room for any dissent. There's no room for any questioning. There is no room for any questions about the way women are treated. There is no room for any questions about how Christians are viewed. And so, yeah, it's pretty despotic, and that's why people are nervous about this issue. So I'd like to hear what you have to say about this. And uh, we'll do that, and uh, we'll go on. Steve on WJR, go ahead, please. Yeah, he's no Christian. No Christian stands for abortion, gay marriage, pervert uh, uh, all the natural laws of God. And no, wait a minute, wait, wait, but the Pope stands for that. Uh, well, also uh, promoting and not hindering uh, Allah uh, over on one side, but prohibiting only one person, Jesus Christ. That is a problem, because in everyone's Bible, it talks about a day where a man would come and everyone would give their power over to this man, especially these ten nations of the Middle East that make up the past Ottoman Empire, and that they would give their power over to him, and I believe that power is for one reason, one reason only. He's promised them Jerusalem. Way back, I saved the articles. When he was first doing his globetrotting, he was promising the Jews Jerusalem. And Henry Kissinger... No, wait, wait, no, no, hold, he, was prom wait, he was promising the Muslims Jerusalem and that's Islam the whole thing okay Kiss well by by the way I've studied this issue in great detail do you know the 1920s the, the the number one Muslim in the world said that the Muslims never had any claim on Jerusalem it was not their holy city they had no care for Jerusalem it only be, became a political uh, football rather recently did you know that and uses everyone that's all he does is use every group I don't care if it's Hispanics blacks Christians, uh, 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 Muslims, he'll use you for what he can get. It's all about self-gain. This is the man who holds himself above all that is worshipped. And th this is the guy. He's that right, so we know he's, he, we know he's a scoundrel and that he's a snake and he's bad for America. But that's not the issue. We have an election coming up, a town hall meeting. At a town hall meeting, a man says the Muslim question comes up and Donald Trump doesn't immediately slap him down the way the coward Christie did. That's the issue. So do you think Obama's a Muslim? No, no, I think he's using them both. I think he, he wears a... Ah, oh, there's, a, there's a different answer. So you agree that he, he may not even be a Muslim. He's just a, what, a Machiavellian, power-mad individual? Who holds himself above all that is worshipped. He, does he doesn't kowtow to anybody's God but himself. All right, so he's a Maoist in that regard. He has made it a cult of personality. He's made himself the supreme leader. Everyone has to do what he wants them to do. Anyone who dissents is excommunicated. Isn't that right? A Judas is only needed to be someone who... Right, is you, there's no answer to any question. All you want to do is talk. We have to have a dialogue. 
And so, Steve, stay on the line. I'll send you a free copy of Government Zero, where I spend an entire chapter on this question of is Obama a Muslim, how it ties into the Muslim Brotherhood, how the Muslim Brotherhood ties right back neatly to Mao Zedong, and what danger we and the world are in as a result of this man and what he has and what he is doing to America. Is that clear enough for you? WJR, Khan, three, Savage Nation calling. Is he a Muslim or not? Not there, dead in the water. Like a, a great call screener, too. One thing after another. That's what goes on. Things happen. Sometimes phones drop out. Let's go to the next one. Charlie, KBOI, is Obama a Muslim, yes or no? Yes, definitely. Uh, Barack Hussein King Obama, definitely. Uh, Cassius Clay is no longer Cassius Clay. He's Muhammad Ali, a converted Muslim. Uh, Obama does not stand with the Egyptians to fight ISIS. He's against Israel. Perfect, you call them Maoist, Muslim, He's a combination of all of them. He is. And I'm the only one who is raising the stakes on the Muslim question and saying that isn't even the issue. Absolutely. The issue is, A, what side of the Muslim equation does he stand on? And B, the type of Muslim he appears to be, or whatever he is, is closer to Mao Zedong than it is to any religion. I'm the only one who ever said that. Wait. McCain, everyone's picking up on McCain's uh, embarrassment. Oh, McCain is a sad sack, loser, liar. McCain was the one who uh, made it impossible for people to see the truth. McCain is a sellout. He's been a member of the Reich forever. McCain had that election in his hand and he, and he blew it at that, that town hall meeting. What more do we need to know about McCain than that stooge went to Egypt after they threw out the Muslim Brotherhood? He had the nerve to go to Egypt, do you remember? And demand that they reinstall the Muslim Brotherhood in Egypt, do you remember that? Yes, sir. Okay, so McCain is a stooge of the Muslim Brotherhood. Absolutely. I, I can remember these pieces. I can remember these pieces. And Charlie, stay on the line because everything we are talking about today is part of the most important book I've ever written. Government zero. It'll be out in a month. I'm not ready to talk about it. I'm holding my fire. I have a huge chapter on this in Government Zero. No borders, no language, no culture. Who took over America? Who's pulling the strings on America? What they've designed for America? What to do to stop them before it's too late, if it's not too late? They never, ever, ever expected Donald Trump to come out of nowhere, which is why they're all going insane. Don't you understand why the little men of the Reich are going insane? Don't you understand why they're going insane? Because they had a bunch of stooges on the stage who were ready to jump to their, play their tune, the Soros tune. You know, you get Republican light, you get Democrat strong, it didn't matter. It didn't matter which of the Republican stooges up there won, as long as he really didn't care for borders, language, and culture, it could be anybody. So all of a sudden, along comes a patriot, Along comes a nationalist, by the way, which is what this is all about. As I have defined, as I do define, as I explain in great detail in Government Zero, if you were to define Donald Trump's <clears throat> politics, they're now calling him a nativist. That's an old word, like that's a dirty word to love your country. Isn't that interesting that all the America haters, all the Christian haters in the media call anyone who loves borders, language, and culture a nativist, like that's a dirty word? The internationalists call those of you who love this country nativists. How interesting. Where'd they learn that? Where did these sick leftists learn to hate Americans? I, don't, I do know. <laughs> Not I don't know. I do know. So <clears throat> if you were to define Donald Trump's politics, you would say not that he's a nativist. You would say that he's a nationalist. That, I'm, I'm afraid to tell you, is anathema to the New World Order. Being a nationalist is the worst possible thing you could be to the emerging Reich. The New World Order is the Fourth Reich. That's exactly what it is. Now, I don't want to go down that road because it's over the heads of the average person and they're going to say he's calling them Hitler and he's calling them... I'm not doing that. The word Reich has a, strict, a very defined meaning. Reich is something new in radio. No one dares use it because they don't have my educational background. So they use the same words over and over again. I seek 
new words for understood meanings. So Reich means realm, 